Is it better to go into a power conditioner or directly into the wall? This comes from Chris Troutman in Florence, Oregon. Hi, Paul. Is it better to run a power cord through a power conditioner or directly into the wall sockets and why? Okay, reasonable question. We've kind of touched on this before. Isn't this a gorgeous turntable? I love this. Is, this is VPI's beauty. Matt Weisfeld set this up for us. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, it's, um, it's their 40th anniversary direct drive table. And we've got a Lyra cartridge on there. That cartridge is almost more than this turntable. <laughs> it's a nice setup, though. Anyway, easily distracted. Squirrel. So, power cords and power conditioners. I have years of experience with both. And if this is going to offend your sensibilities, shut it off now and go watch something else. Because I'm just going to speak right from the hip and I'm not going to try and explain to you, because I know there are so many people out there that go, oh, bull! That, you know, power cords, whether it goes in the wall, power conditioners, don't matter. Uh, and they're just simply wrong, or they have yet to experience the difference. I find it funny, and I fall into this trap too. I certainly don't stand in high and mighty judgment, but, you know, if I think something is silly or nonsensical, very often I haven't actually tried it. I haven't actually made the experiments. I just think it's silly and so I jump up and down and tell people that I'm trying to work my way out of that because that's just not fair. And most people who criticize say, ah, yeah, it's bull. They've never actually tried it on a highly resolving system. It just offends their sensibilities and their practicalities. So we should, as people do our best to get over that and just listen to the experience of people who have taken the time to do it. So years ago, 1997 or so, when I first started thinking about power plants and power regenerators, I did so because of a number of experiences I had with power conditioners. Now back then, power conditioners were Few and far between. They were either just a box with a MOV surge protector on it, and the fancier ones were the e either isolation transformers or a series of coils and capacitors that the power ran through in an effort to clean the power. Whenever we plugged a system into one of those power conditioners with the coils and the cleaning and all of that, our first and immediate reaction was one of, wow, cleaner, definitely, definitely cleaner. It, it just seemed like there was less grunge, there wasn't, you know, this, this, this haze wasn't associated with writing on the music, and there was a noticeable difference. But over time, neither Arnie, my partner at the time, uh, or myself, liked what we were hearing. Why? Because it was stripping the life out of the music. The, the overtones on, on, a, on a guitar when it's a string is plucked, there's this rich set of overtones that on a system like here in the IRS or, or any decent system, you hear on good recordings, you hear those rich overtones and their long decay on a properly recorded piece of music. Put it through a passive power conditioner, and typically what happens, that's gone. That delay, you don't even notice it anymore. Sure, you hear the overtones, but what I'm talking about is the long ringing, the decay of those that you hear going into the room on well-recorded music. Gone, wiped clean. So it stripped the music of essential life that was important to us, and we stopped using it. I figured out later on that one of the problems is impedance. When you use coils of wire, skinny power cables, you're essentially adding to the impedance 
already in the line. So picture a typical run from the power pole where the transformer that's converting 10, 20,000 volts on the telephone line, on the power line, down to the 120 that your house uses. From that point to your house, you probably have hundreds of feet of power cable. I mean, it's, you know, it's wire, right? And that wire has resistance. You can measure it. <coughs> Could upwards of an ohm or so. Depends how long it is. And as you're drawing current, you're modulating that power as you dynamically draw current. So anything that you put in there that adds to that impedance is going to negatively affect what we're talking about, which is why at the end of the day, I designed the active power regenerator, which takes the AC, converts it to DC, and then regenerates new AC with a big power supply and a power amp and all that. So that at the point where you're actually plugging in, you have impedance that's well, well, it's into the micro ohms, okay? And it doesn't matter how long the wire is or how short the wire is. It's, it, picture it like plugging into a power station directly next door to you. And, and that's what a regenerator does. So that's a long-winded answer of saying, if you're running a system that has a high resolving power and you want to maximize its performance, do not plug it into a power conditioner. There's a few that you can, but they're, they're rare. You'd be better off going straight into the wall. Of course, best, hook it up to a power plant. Then you have the best of both worlds. You get the, you know, the protection and you get the cleaning and all that good stuff without sacrificing it. So better into a power conditioner or straight into the wall? If that's your only choice, straight into the wall. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.